Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and I want to make you feel like a goddess tonight. And uh, the reason why I want you to feel that way is because we're going to make something called Green Goddess Chicken. Now, I know a lot of you are familiar with a Green Goddess. It's typically like a cream cheese that's infused with a little bit of a, uh, some sort of green, whether it be some spinach, it could be peas, it could be mushrooms in there, and it's seasoned up really, really nicely to almost be like a really outrageously lush, cream cheesy type texture. It's great for stuffing mushrooms and then frying them, or you could thin it out for a salad dressing. I also have a great green goddess pasta, but today, it's all about why did that chicken cross the road, and it's to jump into the pot, not to get away from it, because this chicken wants to become something so delicious and tasty and praised by a green goddess itself. So we're gonna go right to the Instant Pot and make some amazing green goddess chicken. Let's do it. Take two pounds or so of thinly sliced chicken breasts, also known as chicken cutlets, should be about a quarter of an inch thick. You can very often find in the market where it's already sliced like that for you. If not, just get a nice big breast and just slice it into like quarter inch slices. And then I'm taking about a quarter to a third of a cup of an all-purpose flour. However, you can absolutely use whole wheat flour if you want to be a little bit better there. Or if you want to be gluten-free, you can use quinoa flour, or you can even use coconut flour, that's fine too. And I've seasoned it with just a few sprinkles of garlic powder, some kosher salt, and a little bit of black pepper, and that's all I do. Now this process is called dredging the chicken. We take the chicken, one at a time, and then we just place it inside of our flour mixture here. Like I said, it's called dredging or coating, either way. Dredging is just a little fancier, it's getting you a little fancier. And then just, you know, just put it on both sides. It doesn't have to be crazy, crazy full of like flour. Just a nice dusting, that's it. All right, and let's just repeat that with all of our chicken. And there we have it, all nice and dredged, and now we're gonna move on to our pot. All righty, hi Instant Pot. Now to you, I'm going to add in a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. And now we're gonna give that some heat. Now I'm gonna hit the saute button, and I wanna make sure that I'm in the more or the high setting. I adjust that by either hitting the adjust button if your model has it, or if it doesn't, you hit the saute button again to change the level between less or low, normal or medium, more or high, same things there. And after three minutes of our oil heating up, in batches, I'm gonna take about two chicken cutlets at a time and place it into the pot and brown on each side for about no more than a minute. It's kind of like a flash sear. It doesn't have to be golden or anything like that, just like a light sear. We just wanna give it some extra flavor and texture with that dredge on there. All right, and after a minute on one side, I'm gonna flip it over just like that. You see we have a little bit of color going on here. And then just flip it about another minute on the other side. Now, so many of my chicken dishes that have chicken cutlets in them, like my French onion chicken, my chicken piccata, my chicken marsala, they all go through the same process. You take the cutlet, you dredge it, and then you give it a little bit of a sear in the olive oil. It's a very, very basic fundamental step for giving the chicken cutlets a nice, wonderful start. So now I'm going to take my chicken cutlet here, and I'm going to put it on a plate. And that's looking nice. You see, it's just a very light sear. And now I'm just gonna repeat the process with the rest of my chicken. All right, and there is all of my chicken nice and seared. All right, now we're gonna go to our pot, which is gonna look kinda dry because most of that oil was absorbed by the chicken. I wanna add in two tablespoons of salted butter. And that butter is gonna melt really quickly. And from there, I wanna add in 16 ounces of sliced mushrooms. You can use white or baby bella. And we're gonna saute that in the pot for about three minutes until all of our mushrooms begin to brown and release juices and cook down. All right, and once our mushrooms are beginning to look like this with some color in there and they've cooked down a bit and softened, I wanna add in one cup of chicken broth and I'm using low sodium. Now once we add in our broth, let's make sure we take a spatula or a mixing spoon and then just really deglaze the bottom of the pot, making sure any of the brown bits that were there from when we sauteed our mushrooms or when we browned our chicken with the flour we don't want to make it nice and smooth so nothing's stuck on the bottom. A nice smooth bottom. All right, we're looking great. Now we want to add all of our chicken right back to the pot. And you can just layer it in there, however you see fit. All right, perfect. If you have any extra olive oil on that plate, by all means, add it. And now it might not look like there's a lot of liquid in there, but believe me, the chicken's going to release plenty, as will our spinach. Guys, this wouldn't be a green goddess without some baby spinach in there. I'm adding five ounces and just putting it right on top of the chicken. It's going to wilt and cook down to nothing, releasing more liquid as it does. All right, let's secure our lid. Make sure that we're in the sealing position. Now I want to hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button, depending on your model. Now hit the pressure cook or manual button, depending on your model. And that can be located in a variety of different places, depending on the model you have. But either way, look for the pressure cook or manual button. And I want to go, guys, on this for five minutes at high pressure. That's it. 
And now that we're done pressure cooking, it's time to release that steam, and we call that a quick release. And the pin drops, so the lid will come off. And there's our spinach blanketing our chicken, and you see the spinach cooked down into nothing. That's why it's okay to totally fill the pot with your bread with spinach. That's what's gonna happen, just like this. Now I'm just going to remove my chicken, you can scrape some of the spinach off, it's okay if it's still on your chicken. I'm gonna place it in a serving dish. This chicken is so tender, that chicken is folded right in half, look at that. Do you see how much more liquid we have now that it's all cooked? So much more than what we began with. Again, I'm gonna try to leave as much spinach inside the pot as possible. It's okay if some of it makes it into the dish with the chicken though, like I said. And that's all my chicken in the plate, and now we're gonna focus on turning this into the most amazing, creamy, green goddess sauce. Now I want to hit the cancel button again and the saute button again to bring things to a bubble. I want to take an 8 ounce brick of cream cheese and I just cut it into 8 pieces, little cubes. It's easy for dispersing that way. I'm going to add in 1 cup of pesto. Now I have a great recipe for pesto, but I admit I was too lazy and I didn't use my own today, but I'll link it in the recipe. But in a pinch, I love to use the Kirkland pesto. And that's actually why I wanted to use this, is because I had it in my fridge for a while, it's going to go bad soon and I wanted to use it now. Add that to the pot, a whole cup, a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And this is optional, but to really green it up, I'm adding in 10 ounces of some frozen peas. And you can leave them out to thaw before you put them in while everything's pressure cooking. Don't worry, the heat of the pot is going to totally thaw them out pretty much instantly. All right, so now what I want to do is I just want to stir everything around and make sure everything gets completely melded into our sauce, creating the most amazing green goddess experience ever. We're not seasoning really anything here because the pesto has plenty of flavor on its own. Plus, don't forget, we also seasoned our chicken prior. So our cue is for all of our cream cheese to melt into the sauce and for it to begin to bubble. Once that happens, we'll kill the heat. Make sure you're stirring it often as it's heating up because we don't want anything to stick to the bottom. Remember, there's plenty of daring in there now with the cream cheese and the Parmesan, not to mention the Parmesan that's in the pesto. And when it starts to steam like this, we're fine. It's gonna be totally hot enough. All right, now let's drape this over our chicken. All right, there we go. Look at this. Mm. And right over the chicken you go. Looking delightful. Look at this green goddess goodness. Now again, if you don't like peas or mushrooms, you can leave them out. It is so easy being green today. All right, guys, there it is. Oh, a little bit on the sides. Gotta lick that off and make it look pretty and now dinner is served. But actually, you can also serve it this way if you like. Watch this. I'm gonna take one of these spiffy bowls, add in a little bit of spaghetti that I've cooked separately, crisscross me some chicken on top, and spoon that amazing sauce all over it. Make sure you get it on the pasta as well, of course. You could also do this over rice or cauliflower rice or zoodles, however you want it. Either way, it's gonna be green goddess goodness. And dinner is served. Let's try this out. And all right, folks, there it is. My green goddess chicken over some spaghetti in this situation. You could do it however you want, though. And I am so beyond excited to try this out. Here we go. A lot of spaghetti this time around, but we'll, who cares? It's the same thing, really. The sauce alone is fit for a goddess. And now for the chicken, mostly the chicken I want. I mean, the chicken is cutting like butter just with the fork. Here we go. Absolutely to die for. Delicious. Wow. As everything you've ever wanted in terms of a creamy, parmesan-y, green situation. Even if you don't like mushrooms or peas, try it out in this sauce for the first time. I'm telling you right now, it's gonna change your mind. It's gonna blow your mind. Just divine on every single level. This is something that you can make really any night of the week. It's so easy to do. If they ever told you it's not easy being green, well, they haven't made green goddess. And what can I tell you? I guess I have to write another cookbook now to put this one in it. Maybe a more comforting situation. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, check out PressureLoveCooking.com because I have a ton of recipes there. Each and every one has a video just like this one, and I've also written a cookbook, the international bestseller, the Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook. Thank you so much to those who purchased it. If you don't have it, now's a great time. It has over 750 beautiful color photos with step-by-step -step photos for every single step as well as a finished product. They're all gorgeous pictures by my amazing photographer, Alexis Azulia, and styled by Sarah Constantino. Thank you so much again, guys. Of course, check me out also on Facebook, facebook.com slash pressurelockcooking, and like the page. That's when you're gonna find that new recipes come out, deals on items, tips, things like that, a little peer into my crazy life, and of course, at pressurelockcooking on Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So if you're looking to make a meal that is super easy, beyond tasty, and you'll be worshipped like a goddess, well, just get ready to make some green goddess chicken. 
over pasta, over rice, on its own, however you want to do it. I mean, it's just beyond. 